On today's episode of Watch Jerry Go, we bring one of my favorite cars out of hiding. This is my 2000 Audi S4 B5 from Car Trek, and it's hurt. What is going on guys? I am Watch J Argo and today I'm here with my 2000 Audi S4 B5. Like I said, it was the one Ed Bullion drove in Car Trek uh, 5, I think. Now it's been a long time now, I don't remember. And if you look, you can see smoke is rolling out of the engine bay. Rolling. I mean, it is, you can't see through the fog over here and the, you can feel the oil burning your eyes a little bit. And now we're gonna go take a look at where it was parked for the last, oh, I don't know, six months or something like that. It was parked over here all winter. After we did the Car Trek 6 track day, uh, of course I pretty much cooked the brakes. They're fine, they're Porsche brakes. They, they won't have any issue, it just needs driven some more. But it started uh, smoking and the wheel bearings are gone. <laughs> so <laughs> it got driven and it didn't matter. I won, that's all that really matters. Uh, but then this happened. That is a lot of oil on the floor. Woo! And uh, that's, that looks like it's back there from the turbo area, the really dark fluid. And this looks like a front seal or something went. So I wouldn't doubt that. And it also makes sense for why oil fog smoke is coming out of the uh, engine bay right now. So we're gonna hop in here and take a look at it. The game plan today was just to do the wheel bearings, but uh, let's see what's really wrong with it. The headliner guy basically ruined my car uh all of the trim is ruined he lost all, all the clips are broken so that's why we stopped recommending my old headliner guy uh he was doing killer work but both audis were a very bad deal for me open this thing up and see if we can find the source of the smoke although i kind of doubt we'll be able to here oh it might just be the valve covers have always leaked so it could have just been oil burning off the valve cover gaskets here I mean, you can see it's a little wet right down in there under the heat shield. The front's definitely been recently resealed. We've talked about that before. You can see all the brand new gaskets. Ooh, this side is super wet. There's oil all over this. Well, maybe it's been a while since they did valve cover gaskets on this. Uh, but of course I did the oil change the day before the track day. So the oil has uh, 20 miles on it maybe, but it just wasn't down to hold up to that kind of stress. I'm gonna put this thing on the lift right now and let's uh, check out these rear wheel bearings. That sounds like the job we should tackle first. And then I really wanna pull the engine out of this car. So uh, we might scan it and see what all's wrong with it. And we might rip the engine out of it too, cause it needs done. It really needs resealed and it probably needs all the timing chain guides and all that stuff. I know it's been done many times on this car, but it should probably be done again. You can never do it enough on these things. I'm excited to be working with Omaze again to offer you the chance to win a Ford F-150 Raptor while supporting a great cause, Folds of Honor. And not just any Ford Raptor, it also has the Raptor 37 performance package on it, which gets you all kinds of other awesome toys on the truck, like 17 inch beadlock capable wheels and 37s. You get the Fox suspension, of course, and it's powered by the 3.5 liter EcoBoost V6 that makes 475 horsepower 510 foot pounds of torque in your truck. Not to mention that truck does zero to 60 in 5.1 seconds. So it's a screamer. Not only is it fast, it's definitely pretty because it comes in lead foot gray. It's got the Rhapsody blue interior and you get the twin panel moonroof, all glass roof, b &O sound system and the Recaro seats. By entering, you'll also be supporting the Folds of Honor Foundation. They provide educational scholarships to the spouses and children of America's fallen or disabled service members. Let me know in the comments below what you would do if you won this epic truck. And to enter for your chance to win this F-150 Raptor and support the Folds of Honor Foundation, head on over to amaze.com slash watchjrgo. Again, huge thank you to Amaze for sponsoring today's video and continuing to support automotive creators like me. I had to make a little detour over to the car ninja shop to steal some tools from him. Grabbed his uh, wheel bearing puller set and his slide hammer. I'm gonna try to change these wheel bearings in the wheel hubs without actually taking them off the car. So it'll be my first time trying to do that. Obviously the CVs have to come out. Um, so we're still gonna pull the wheel and probably the brake, I mean obviously the brake and uh, get the CV out. So we have to like pull the top of the suspension off and put it back on. Then we can try to use the slide hammer and the wheel bearing tool. So hopefully this works. Like I said, never tried it before. We're gonna do both sides. Uh, huge shout out to FCP Euro. I'll throw links in the description below for these parts because obviously they had them uh, and they had them quickly. I also picked up this ABS tool from them that tells you which direction the bearing needs to be installed. So hopefully that's everything we need to get this job done. Let's get this thing in the air, get the wheels off it and start pulling it apart. Well,
Well, we made it one minute in, we got the wheel off and immediately sheared off my half inch to three eighths adapter. Can someone make one of those that's strong? Like one of those that can hold a couple thousand foot pounds. Uh, there's just no reason they break so often. So obviously we need way more torque than even the impact could deliver. Oh, oh gosh. How did the ratchet head not break yet? That's the real question. Well, there you go. It's impossible to take an axle out of a 2000 Audi S4 or uh, axle bolt. <laughs> I don't know what to do other than this. I need a, a breaker bar, but no matter what I put on there, it's going to snap every single adapter that I need for this thing. I need a half inch drive, 14 mil hex on a six foot long breaker bar. And then I got to worry about supporting the back of the car because we're pulling real hard. What I thought was gonna happen, happened. It freewheels now. Oh, come on, this is not good. Not only does it freewheel, the ratchet head, at least the, uh, the cam mechanism here, there aren't tools big enough for this job. Well, I'm gonna continue breaking this thing off of there. You can see clean through that thing. And eventually, I guess I'll just hit it with the sledgehammer and we should be able to get this off and hopefully extract the rest of the ratchet. All right, shout out to Husky. I gotta give him credit for this. I've seen many cheap ratchets. I mean, it's not an expensive ratchet. It's not a free one, but it's a Husky that came in the old kit that I've had for like two years. Um, many of them have snapped off inside the head. Like the ratcheting mechanism itself just explodes. Uh, the balls like pop out of it or something like that and then no more ratchet. This one still ratchets just fine. Well, mostly just fine. There's a dead section, it sounds like. Right, right there, there's a dead section. And uh, there's the carnage. That's what's left of it. And it is rebuildable. I bet you can honestly, I almost kind of want to pull the clip out and uh, see if you just swap out the head there. But instead, obviously, this should be lifetime warrantied. So I gotta go get a new tool that I lost the whole day. The day's over because there's only one place that sells these and it's all the way across town. And I'm sure it's gonna be a big pain to get it replaced. Honestly, I should just change to the old icons. Uh, I am in love with everything icons making. So I want this replaced. Obviously I've got, a, I've got a bucket of broken tools here. I've got some broken HF, some broken power torque, some broken Husky, or the big impact might get it if there wasn't an adapter in there. The adapter probably killed it. That thing worked out great. Look at that, the icon tools don't snap. <laughs> I'm not nice to them. I've got more 3 8 ratchets. Obviously we've got two of the gold ones, but I don't want to destroy those two. And obviously that's what's going to happen today. Uh, we just do not have enough tool to make this happen. And before you think beat on it a little bit off camera, I put that 14 on here and the, took the giant sledgehammer, the big one. First it's got knock release on there too. I have soaked it inside and out. And uh, then I take the big sledgehammer and just beat on it to try to get it to free up in case it's rust holding us up. Um, there's, there's just no winning on this one. It's not a traditional uh, wheel bearing that we can just like torch and get out. This one's just gonna be a nightmare. Just fight me to the death. Look what I just found, it's torture test day. This is the O'Reilly's half inch to three eighths adapter. I'm gonna use the uh, torque wrench as a breaker bar because there's obviously no other option here. And we're gonna put that onto the 14 mil hex wherever it went. And we're gonna try to snap this one too. We need to get the job done. So we're gonna try whatever it takes. To try and not break the torque wrench, I'm setting it to the highest setting, 240 foot pounds and reverse. Hopefully this gets us what we need. Something is going. Well, <laughs> it was worth a shot, okay? Well, it turns out there is an Icon half inch drive, 14 millimeter hex, which is what I need on here. Uh, this is just not gonna cut it. I mean, obviously this thing is solid and is not breaking. I've broken uh, many things off in it today. Uh, but the Icon one should let me put the big impact on it, full power and hopefully uh, it'll transmit all of that impact through it instead of losing a bunch of power with extensions and adapters. One hour and a half motorcycle ride later and we have all new adapters from the old HF, uh, the Icon Professional Hex socket set, the big boys here, and the new Husky 144 tooth ratchet, 
They didn't exactly give it to me, but they credited me the other one. So I paid like $15 for this or something. So uh, I'm just interested to try it because 144 might be the highest tooth count I've seen so far. Obviously, if you guys are into tools, you've seen that all the new ratchets are those roller ball ones where uh, they have like a completely frictionless clutch. So they'll swing anywhere. This is supposed to be 2.5, but the uh, roller ones are like 0.5. So no degree at all swing. Let's open this up, however you do it. I can see why you have to take out four Phillips screws and then pull a case off and then take that off. And then you can finally use the tool you needed. Will it work? I just got a fresh battery on this thing. If it's gonna work, it'll work. Okay, so easiest job ever if you have the right tools. That took all of uh, one second, as you saw. Smells delicious though. Smells like knocker loose. Maybe the knocker loose did a little bit of work. Uh, the threads look beautiful on the bolt. Let me pull it off of here. But you can see there was like a rust ring and there's a chance the penetrant plus having the right tool was the key. Either way, it's out. I'm gonna go ahead and pull the ABS sensor out. This gives us a good chance to use our new Husky ratchet here. I do wanna make sure it's not hanging out in there while we're uh, trying to get this wheel bearing out. Look at that, coming right off. All right, let's switch to a real tool. I did not think these brakes had been changed to anything higher performance, but they definitely have. There's an adapter bracket on here that changes to whatever uh, these calipers are back here. All right, I went ahead and popped the uh, nut off of the upper here, slid the bolt out, just bent the uh, upper out, and uh, popped the axle out. So that ended up being super easy. As you can see, that just took a second. And now I started to unscrew uh, my studs. I, this is not a lug Audi, it's a stud conversion race car things obviously lets me run the spacers and uh you know whatever wheels i want to on this thing so now i need to use these uh lugs as like a jacking point here and it looks like if i can get a bolt that's metric and long enough i should be able to just let the bolts pull the hub off of here so i'm gonna go on a hunt for some bolts that match this hopefully i've got something here and uh, if i do should be able to get that right off I bought what they had that would fit where the stud goes in. Uh, it is a 14 by 1.5 millimeter bolt, uh, fine thread, and a 50 millimeter. 50 millimeter is not gonna cut it, but I think we can stick some spacers behind it and find a way to cut it. So we're gonna go ahead and start threading these things in here. Then I'll just take some like metal flat bar or something like that, and that should get us where we need to go. And we'll use the impact to run these in. Well, it's coming out. I've got my jacking bolts in here and uh, I'm ruining some unistrut because I needed a giant metal spacer and this is working out pretty well. If you had box tubing, whatever that is, one by one box tubing, I think it would work really well. But this is getting it done. I can promise you that. Well, we left the race on there, which is unfortunate. We're gonna have to try to find a way to get that off. But hey, the hub's off, which is a good sign. It looks like all these studs need Loctite it in. They're all actually loose. Whoever replaced them didn't try very hard. And we're ready to pull our jacking bolts out. The custom built tool right there. There's a big note on the case that this bearing remover and installer came in and it says do not use impact wrench. What a bunch of lamos. Trying to ruin everybody's fun. All right, so we're gonna thread this thing through here. This cup fit in there perfectly. There we go. And hopefully this also fits perfectly. I found the right socket we needed to run this thing and I think we're gonna have a lot better luck now. So let's try this again. Oh, we are spinning on the back. Well, socket or not, this is a crazy job. I tried the entire bearing puller setup again. It didn't move even a, even a millimeter. I tried the slide hammer again, not even a little bit of movement. I think I'm stuck. This was supposed to be the easy way to do it. I was like, look, we're gonna do it in the car. I'll show you guys how simple it can be. Uh, I think we're gonna pull the upright and put it in the press and put the bearing uh, plate on there and it should come right out. Unfortunately, that's gonna be a big job. It's gonna take quite a while to get all that done. 
So I guess today you guys just got to watch me break all my tools. That is how you do not change the bearing in your Audi S4. I'll get the rest of this knocked out and put it back together. Obviously it's a, a pretty simple job, you know, set up your whole bearing tool, make sure the plate fits inside. There's two races in this thing. So make sure you have the right puller in there, the one that fits inside there. Uh, and then, you know, I mean, maybe use the impact. I really don't want to do it because it said not to, but like maybe that'll get it done. And, you know, have a press on standby if your car has 300,000 miles. These are probably stock wheel bearings. The car has 300,000 miles on it. It's probably a safe assumption if you're working on yours. It won't be as bad as mine because it won't have this many miles on it and everything won't be uh, seized into place. Obviously the bearing like fell apart too. That was, that was fun. So I also have to go get one of those uh, jaw bearing pullers and get the rest of it off of the hub. So there's actually a lot of work to do on my car right now that I can't simply knock out. Hopefully you have better luck than that. If you buy the tool that's for the Audi S4, you'll probably have even better luck. It, uh, instead of having to use Unistrut, it has a plate that bolts in here so that you can uh, put your jack bolts on the hub and pull it right out. Comes with the bolts too, I think. Comes with everything you need. So uh, there is a kit for like three or $400 to make this job easy. Hopefully it works for you. Anyway, that is it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. And again, huge thank you to Omaze for sponsoring today's video. Don't forget to head on over to omaze.com slash watchjrgo to enter to win an F-150 Raptor. And don't forget about shop watchjrgo.com for cool shirts, not like this. And please like, share, subscribe, do whatever you want to do. And I will talk to you next time. The Boulevard of Broken Tools and Failed Tools today. Just nothing worked out. Happens some days. So I, I'm excited that we got this far. I mean, as soon as I broke out the slide hammer, I was like, this is it. It's going to give up. <sighs> Not at all. Maybe I should just stop buying cars with 300,000 miles on them.